Hello and welcome. I'm Peggy, and I'm so glad that you could join me today. And I'm excited because we're celebrating right here 80 years. That's a long time. And if you think about 80 years that have benefited hundreds and hundreds of families, children, it's amazing. And we're talking about that wonderful, glorious miracle. Hill, and I thank you all for coming. And I'm, I'm honored. Sandy Fresnel is here. She's the media coordinator. Lindsay Crespo is here. She's the adva advance coordinator. And you're smiling. You're still smiling. <laughs> and Jim Harrison. And Jim is the connections coordinator. And of course, we'll have the phone number and the website for you. 80 years. Yep. And you're celebrating with a big event, for a sure. gala. Yes. That anybody can come to. Anyone can come to. Absolutely. It's um, it seats eight per table, and it's twenty five dollars per seat. Um, it's just different. We typically have had a banquet, where it's a typical sit down, yes. watch somebody speak. But this time it's a gala. It's going to be big. There's entertainment. There's a different style of food and serving, and just everything's going to be trying try to leave some of it first as a surprise, so that no, not too much is given away. But um, just different forms of entertainment, some worship, just a. A big celebration, just as you would for any kind of birthday or anniversary. So, and anyone can can come to this, and that this event is when? It's March 21st. March 21st. Yep, at the TD Convention Center. All right, here in Greenville. That's it, and the doors open at 5.30 for a pre-show, and the celebration begins at 6 p.m. Okay, now, hopefully, some of us can be there. Yeah, and, absolutely. But even if you can't, I think it's important for people to know mm -hmm. what you're celebrating. Absolutely. Not just 80 years, but the commitment that has been made by many, many people mm -hmm. throughout all those years. So tell us a little bit about the background. Sure. Well, Miracle Hill is the most comprehensive, largest provider of services to the homeless here in upstate South Carolina. So we literally are spread across the upstate. We have nine shelters. These are homeless shelters, addiction recovery centers, children's home, boys shelter. We also have foster care. We currently have over 200 foster families that we have recruited and that um, are taking in foster children across the upstate. So Miracle Hill is definitely focused on caring for the least of these. And we, we like to say that really what we do, our mission is to help hurting people become whole. So we are constantly working with people who are in a pretty rough place in their lives, sometimes at a very desperate place. And so we help them to get to a better place. And we've been doing it for 80 years. Miracle Hill started out as a soup kitchen in downtown, downtown Greenville really? back in 1937. <gasps> yeah, so it started out that way. And then eventually um, it became the Greenville Rescue Mission. That was our very first shelter that we ever had. And then through the years, we've just added more and more. We eventually got the Children's Home, which is in Pickens County. And then from there, we just added additional shelters as we saw the need. Now, the Children's Home is not an adoption home. It, what, what is the Children's Home? The Children's Home is for children who have been in the system. So basically, they come from through DSS, Department of Social Services. So they could be children who've been abused mm -hmm. or have been... Neglected. Not under the best circumstances for children to, to live, Exactly. Right? Children who have been removed from their homes, and they get referred to us by the Department of Social Services. And so then they, that's how they end up at our Miracle, Miracle Hill Children's Home. And, you know, a lot of people think of a children's home as maybe just one big, you know, facility or whatever. But the way that Miracle Hill does it is we actually have several cottages. So it's more of a home-like environment so that the kids will be there with house parents in an actual house. So it may be eight or nine kids at the most. So. That in itself is a miracle. It really is. And uh, you have many volunteers, don't you? We do. We always need more. <laughs> when you talk about house parents, how do you find these people? Well, we definitely have employment opportunities at Miracle Hill. So if, if anybody out there actually is looking for employment, it is a great place to work. Um, we were actually recognized as a best Christian workplace. So um, people who do want employment in that arena can definitely go on our website at miraclehill.org and look at those opportunities. 
Um, but you asked about volunteers, and we have a tremendous need for volunteers, not just for events like the gala or like our cycling event, but ongoing needs. For example, um, in the children's home or at the boys' shelter, we need mentors. So people who would like to come alongside one of those boys or girls and actually just be a friend to them, love them, speak into okay, their so lives. Okay, so the boys' home is separate from. Right. Explain we have a boys' that. shelter. Right. The boys' the, shelter is separate from. That's correct. Boys' shelter is strictly for boys, and that would be ages 11 to about 18. Um, and so that can house, I think, around 23, 24 boys. Ooh. But yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot. That okay. So now tell us what I want to. I want to talk to Jim a minute. Now, what what do you do? Well, yes, ma'am. In addition to the uh, shelters that Sandy just talked about, we have nine thrift stores. Uh, and the merchandise that we sell through those thrift stores, the profits go back into the ministry to support our shelters. So my role is to have uh, work with churches, businesses, and schools to bring gift and kind donations into the thrift stores. A couple of the ways that we do that, we have a couple of programs now. One is called Corners of Your Field. That's geared primarily toward individuals that donate directly to our thrift stores. Uh, and we ask those individuals to register, especially for their church. Uh, we ask for their name, their phone number, and the church that they are affiliated with. And then we track those donations, and on a quarterly basis, based on the value of the donations that those church members give, we give gift cards back to the churches so they can in turn help people in need that come to the church that are uh, you know, needing clothing or, or household goods, things of that m nature. The uh, other program that we have is called the Yellow Bag Project, and it's more geared toward churches, businesses, or schools to, to do a corporate clothing drive event. Uh, the way it works, we actually partner with a church. Uh, they'll pick a date that they will do the collection. We'll give them the yellow bags. Uh, they'll hand those bags out one or two weeks ahead of the collection. Uh, and then we'll bring a truck to the church, the school, or the business, park it there uh, so that people, as they're coming to church or to work, they can just put the bags in the truck. We'll then take that material, pick it up on Monday, take it back to the stores and weigh it. And there again, for churches, we give gift cards based on the amount of donation that we receive that the churches then can then turn around and give to folks that come to them that have a need. So it's kind of a way of closing the loop for folks that, that have needs. Uh, it helps our churches. It, it helps Miracle Hill. Uh, it's, it's a very good process. So you can see oh, some I of see, the... I see, Jim, you brought some, you've got some nice looking things there. Yes, ma'am. We certainly ask people to, to jo donate their gently used clothing. Uh, yeah, this I mean, you material, don't want junk. You no, ma'am. We want, this, we want clothing that, nice. uh, that can be sold in, in the thrift stores. Uh, there are some nice materials that come through. I brought clothing because it was easier to handle. Yeah. Uh, for thrift store donations, we also take furniture, you uh, do. household goods, linens are a big thing in the stores that people need. So all of those things can be donated, and you can donate it to any of the thrift stores. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good program. So, and of course... It's, it's kind of fun to go to some of these places because you never know what gem you're going to find. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Isn't that right? Matter of fact, I think Lindsay was saying that she's wearing some thrift I store sure clothes right now. So it, and Sandy is as well. So. <laughs> well but you, there are uh, some, you look pretty sharp, I'll yeah. tell you. That's <laughs> wonderful. There are some awesome finds. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, because you, you never know what, true. what's going to be there. And it's you know, the true. thrift stores are another avenue for volunteering. We actually do have people who come in and volunteer at the thrift stores. We'll have groups that come in, individuals who come in, because we look at our thrift stores as not just an enterprise, not just a you know retail outlet, but we look at it as a ministry. So when people come in and walk through those doors, those very well may be people who have a great need that day. Maybe it's somebody who has a son or daughter or a husband or a wife who is dealing with addiction right now, and they need to know that Miracle Hill has a place that can help that. And so when folks walk into our thrift stores, we're looking at them as people who have great needs, just like the rest of us. So you're not necessarily looking for homeless people. I mean, it can be people with all kinds of problems. Right, exactly. Um, Miracle Hill not only has the homeless shelters, but we do have two residential addiction recovery centers. So one of them is for men and one is for women. And they live there for six months. And they go through intensive counseling and discipleship, and they work through the, the deeper issues that are going on inside of them that are leading to the addictive behaviors. 
and um, it has a pretty high success rate actually. Um, people who actually graduate through the program and then move on into the transitional program because we have transitional housing as well. Typically that's anywhere from a year to 18 months. There's about a 70% success rate for those addiction recovery programs and that's really pretty unheard of. Well does someone who is having an addiction problem do they just come or do they have to be referred? They can be referred. Um, they can go online and actually fill out an application themselves. They can contact the center directly. Um, all that information is on our website. So if somebody does want to go ahead and fill out an application to be in one of those programs, they can definitely do that online. And um, our website is miraclehill.org. So they're definitely welcome to do that as well. And then they go through the application process. Now you're celebrating 80th anniversary and you've got a big event coming up exactly. and we're going to go to a quick break and come back and we can find out how we can all be a part of this so don't go away <laughs> 